coach Nick Mingio, student athletes Devin Burks, Nolan McCarthy, Robert Hogan, and Cameron O'Brien. Uh, coach, opening statement. My heart is just uh, filled with gratitude. Um, so proud of these players, coaches, staff, former players, former coaches, former staff members that have just poured so much into this program. Thankful for our fans. Big Blue Nation was unbelievable these last three weeks, even dating back to the last regular season series of the year. Just absolutely incredible. Our fans um, really showed out, and um, this is my plea to get them to come to Omaha, <laughs> create that same environment. Um, our players, they're unbelievable. They have true grit, true toughness, unbelievable belief, real belief in one another and each other, and their true love for one another really showed. It really showed, um, not only this weekend, but really all season long. Just truly amazing. And um, I want to spend a special thanks to our other coaches and staff members. There's no way this happens without them. So just so thankful for these group of men and what they've been able to do and what they're going to continue to do. Gave us all an experience that we'll never forget. All right, uh, questions for the athletes. For um, Cameron and Robert, just you faced one of the best offenses in the country, three hits all weekend. Can you just talk about how, like, what was the game plan? Just what, what, what are you guys were thinking going into this? Just making our pitches. Um, the biggest thing was just throwing strikes. Um, they haven't seen us before, and so that's to our advantage. They haven't played us all year. We haven't played them. So we get to learn every day. And so just making our pitch, see what happens. And that was the best outcome for us. Yeah, once again, Coach Rozelle called a great game. Um, he's been nails in the postseason. So we're just going out executing quality pitches, trusting what he calls. And Dev's got us back there behind the plate. So we're just going on the attack and executing quality pitches. Uh, Daniel here from 30 Sports Radio. Devin, you go back to media day, I believe there, there were a few of us crowded around you. And I think it was Brian Millen that asked you if the goal is Omaha. And, and you said you said yes, and you said your mom already booked the hotel. Just how surreal is it now? You know, just, just, <coughs> it's crazy. I mean, you know, you always, you always, you know, you know you're going to get there. You know you're confident in getting there uh, with your squad. But, man, when it actually happens, it's like you look around and we're like, we're going to Omaha, <laughs> and it's crazy. It's crazy, and you know I couldn't. Have, could, could, we all couldn't have done it without the coaching staff. You know, Mr. Mitch Barnhart. You know, all the higher ups. Everybody. You know, we. Everybody is all hands on deck when it comes to this. So, yes, sir. Okay. Nolan, this for you. Just can you can you take me through the the play where you scored the go ahead run? Just kind of how it unfolded from where you were at. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> I was on second. Coach Mann just making sure, telling me to be balanced on my skips. Uh, don't want to get back picked or anything like that. It's a big run. Um, and I saw it squeak by, and I was running to third, and immediately I saw their pitcher wasn't covering. Um, I think I ran through a stop sign. But, <laughs> but it ended up working out, so, uh, yeah, no one's covered home, so might as well take what they're going to give you. Were you worried that you dived too soon? No. <laughs> I, I told Robert before the game that I was gonna I was gonna Pete Rose dive today. Yeah, and it ended up happening. I mean, he's crazy. So. <laughs> this guy's crazy. <laughs> uh, John Clay, Harold Leader. Robert, can you talk about the at bat with uh, Vizana there with first and third? You got him. I mean, that was a huge play in the game. What 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 were you trying to do, and, and how did you how did you get him out? Yeah, uh, the biggest thing. I mean, just. Thank Roselle. He's like, dude, just trust your stuff. They can't hit it. Um, I mean, everyone behind me was had my back and was like, you have the best stuff here. And so, <laughs> um, so I just did that and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna trust my stuff, throw it, and if he hits it, he hits it. If he doesn't, he doesn't. But I mean, he's he's one of the best hitters. I mean, he's a Golden Spice finalist. And so, I mean, I know I had to get throw my best stuff to get him out. Dylan Ballard of Cedar Blue, this is for any of you guys. What, how does it, the fans being there, I know Coach has mentioned it, a few of you guys have mentioned it, but how did it help at times than just kind of being behind you guys, getting loud when you needed it? And just, I know, I think uh, Nicholson yesterday said it was like having an extra man out there. Can any of you guys elaborate on that? Uh, yeah, I'll go. Um, <clears throat> just, you know, it, 
sometimes like you gotta look around in the game. You know, I'm I'm fortunate enough to be behind the plate, so I get a decent amount of time to like look around and enjoy the environment. And I, I'll never forget <laughs> after he threw that ball, that slider behind the dude's head. I looked <laughs> back at Mr. Brian behind the plate. And he just looked at me and started laughing. I was like, it's loud, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's loud. So, man, BBN, they do the most for us, and we appreciate them. I mean, we could totally feel them all week. I was sitting on my couch with my roommates this morning, and it's like 9 p.m. game. You think they're going to show out? And Man, this is the craziest atmosphere I've ever been a part of. And, I mean, we played the Super Regional at, at the box last year. Um, just absolute support from those guys, and it's just amazing. It's amazing that BBN showed out, and it was absolutely a home field advantage. Whether it was a neutral site, it was a home field advantage. It was awesome. Yeah, that was that was the coolest thing ever. I mean, it's 9 p.m. You kind of like you're looking and seeing if people are showing up, and then, I mean, 7:25, you had you see people run into their seats. It's like, holy cow! It's kind of surreal, you know, um, coming to see us play. And I mean, it, it's something that it makes us want to play for them and play for this state even more because. Having them there, it means a lot. It shows that they're here for us, um, and that just makes us want to do better. Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, we we're looking at a 9v1 mentality on the mound, and you got Dev back there fist pumping, but nothing like BBN just getting loud when you get two strikes or you get a big out. I mean, it's, it's super special and really helps us out there on the field. Yeah, for, for the guys other than Nolan, can you describe what you were thinking when he was running around third base with that play? And, and how much does that play kind of sum up this team's I knew he had it. Yeah, I've seen that happen. I mean, like, he's always being crazy. So. As soon as the ball went by and the pitcher was, I don't, I don't know what he was doing. He was, like, looking around or something. I was, like, I hopped over the fence, and I was, like, Nolan, like, you're going. And he, like, I was already on it. He was already, like, like at home sliding. I was, like, let's go. Yeah, we were we were in the bullpen, and I was, like, I, I, was, I was watching, and we were all, like, Oh my gosh, no one's doing it. Pitcher's not covered. Go. And and all of a sudden I see him dive. I'm like, oh my gosh, he just did the Pete Rose dive. <laughs> I'm like, that was awesome. I'm like, I remember that. And you know, I'm just it just shows how gritty we are and how we're willing to do everything it takes to win. I mean, I mean, he's also he's crazy, so <laughs> Jeff, Jeff Drummond, Kentucky Rivals. Uh, Devin, you probably had the best view of this, but uh, Mitchell Daly's. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What do you see and for any of you other guys that watch it again? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, as soon as he hit it, or well, <laughs> called the pitch, and it was supposed to be expanded away, Wait. he would have got chewed out if that would have went by. Yeah. Because it was right down the middle. It was right down the middle. <laughs> and he hit it, and I, as soon as it came out of his hand, I was like, oh, man, like it was one of them pitches that you, you want back. You know what I'm saying? And he ended up hitting it on the ground. And we got a goal, basically a gold glover. We got all gold glovers all the way around the infield. I mean, including you. Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah, he, he made it. And as soon as he made it, I was like, oh, he got him. He got him out. You know what I'm saying? I didn't even need to watch the throw. I was already yelling. I was already like, let's go. So, yes, sir. Yeah, for that. Mitch is one of the best, like, clubhouse guys you can have. And he's a guy who played shortstop for three years before this. And he turned into a third baseman this year. It's just super impressive to see what he's done this year. Because you can hit it 110 miles an hour, he's he's keeping it in the infield. I mean, just one of the best, the hardest workers I've been around. Just awesome to see it come through in a big moment. Yeah, I mean, not only that, he's he's got the heart of gold. I mean, he's there cheering everyone on. He wants everyone else to do good, and we all love him to death. He's a brother, and I mean, he uh, he's selfless. And like every time he's in the box, he's always pounding his chest because he's like, he we know he's got us. So. Mm -hmm. What's it do for a pitcher when you see that behind you? It, uh, it makes pitching a lot easier, I'll tell you that. Um, I mean, knowing that you have gold glovers at every single position and you have a guy that will block every single ball behind the dish makes it pretty easy to pitch. I mean, you don't have to worry about giving up a dribbler or a hard hit because, you know, if it's on the ground or if it's in the air, you get it's an out. Yeah, I mean, I was squatted down in the corner of the dugout just trying to keep it cool, but I saw Mitch dive, and Coach always says you can't let the ball get by you down the line. So just seeing him lay out, I knew he stopped it, and then seeing him hop up and make the throw was just incredible, and I knew right then we were going to win that game. Michelle. Michelle Knesvik, UK Sports Network for Robert or Cameron. What is it like to have a guy like Devin behind the plate who can adjust to whoever's on the mound? Mm -hmm. He, he knows us more than we know ourselves sometimes. I mean, he's back there 
giving me fist pumps, hitting his chest when he needs to, giving me cues like when I throw a bad pitch. I mean, it's just awesome to have support like that back there. And, you know, when Coach calls it in the dirt, like we're told to make Devin work. So it's really it's really cool to see him back there blocking those balls for us and being big. Yeah. It's, it's pretty awesome having him back there because it's his energy that also helps you pitch. Um, seeing him fist pump, seeing him jump up, and, I mean, you know he's got it. I mean, and it just makes you like, all right, I got this too. Like having that guy behind the dish because he's just such a leader, you know. Yeah. One more, John. Yeah, uh, I know you guys have unfinished business in Omaha, but but what does it feel like to be the first, the first Kentucky team to make it to Omaha? I mean, there can only be one first team. To do Come on, let's go. <laughs> 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 we don't move. <laughs> we don't move. I'll, I'll start. I mean, this is something Devin and I have been talking about since Rest since our, our freshman year. Uh, we were just probably hitting down here more more than anyone else when they were on the road and stuff. I mean, we were we were just down here talking about Omaha in a couple of years. And Coach Minge, I think it was was it our freshman or sophomore year, we had to read a book called the Omaha, or the, no, the Energy Bus. Energy Bus, yeah. But we started calling it the Omaha Bus because we are going to get to Omaha. Mm -hmm. And um, just seeing the way it's built over the last couple of years, feels like we really kicked the door down now. And, I mean, we have unfinished business, but, I mean, it feels amazing to be the first ones. That is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's special. Uh, I think when I was in the transfer portal, a lot of things Coach Mins was telling me was, you're going to come here and do something that's never been done before. So to sit here and be doing something that's never been done before is pretty awesome. And we're definitely not done yet. Yeah, it, it's honestly surreal. Uh, it's probably the best thing that any of us could have asked for, being in this position. Uh, and so we're going to go to Omaha and we're going to do our thing because we ain't done. <laughs> Robert, you were chatting with Darren and prior to, I guess, yesterday's game about how you felt like Breaking pitches would be a key this weekend against the Pac-12 team. Did that give you confidence? Uh, clearly, did it play out the way you thought it would? Yeah, I mean, it goes to say, I mean, we all have really good stuff. Um, everyone up and down the staff. And being able to throw it in there for a strike um, makes it ten times easier. I mean, look at Johnny. He just threw three breaking balls for to the end the game. <laughs> And so that just kind of helps, and especially like when you have guys that can do that, it makes it easier. And like I told you, breaking balls against these guys, they just, they all, they've been seen as fastballs, you know? And so being able to have stuff that they haven't seen before makes it easier to get them out. Yeah, one more in the back. Sorry for my voice, guys. Uh, Mike Laps with Fox 56. Uh, you guys always think about Omaha, right? And you guys have never done it before. It's the pinnacle of the sport, but what have been your thoughts about Omaha, just your dreams? You know, once you get there, you'll see it. But what have those dreams been like in your head? And like, what are you expecting when you actually get there? I swear I could smell it in the last one. <laughs> <laughs> when we got two hours, I was like, oh, my goodness. We going, baby. Come on, we going. But, yeah, it always feels like untouchable. You know what I'm saying? It always feels like, because it is, you know, it's the road to Omaha. is so long, you know what I'm saying? So, man, we just come out every day, you know. This don't expire. <laughs> we got to we got to But you know, 12 o'clock is, you know, it expires and you know, come out to practice the next day or if we have an off day, go lift. Uh, you know, just, you know, just keep going, you know, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Then you finally achieve this and it's like, it doesn't even, they can don't even feel real. You know what I'm saying? It feels like you still have unfinished business, which we do. So just keep going. I mean, I remember, I think I was like probably 10 to 15 years old in summer ball. Uh, at a hotel somewhere just watching watching the college world series and it's it's just amazing and it's been my dream ever since then being able to have this opportunity it's just awesome and you know going into that at ninth inning i knew rob was crazy i knew he was crazy and he was going to get us an out and then i mean talking about with breaking pitches i'm sitting with two guys with some of the best breaking stuff in the country and johnny hummel's slider and curveball are unreal i mean Oh, man, I could, I could, I could taste it too. It was, it was, I mean, it was, it was crazy. I was on my knees, just waiting for it. And man, we, they delivered. Yeah, I think that picture over there of the of TD Ameritrade, that's been like the header on my Twitter since like senior year of high school or something like that. So it's always been a goal of mine, and to be able to go there, it's going to be awesome. But we're still focused on the game on the field. Yeah, I would say um, being able to go back um, with guys that I. I love um, means a lot, and 
doing something that UK's never done before means even more. Um, just like, it's almost speechless. I don't even know how to put it. Um, you know, uh, I don't know how to put it. <laughs> it, it makes me speechless it is. That, we're, uh, that we're going. Hoagie's, Hoagie's, and I don't mean to interrupt, but Hoagie's story is pretty amazing. When, if you guys ever get a chance to just find out where he was just a year ago mentally, not making road trips, not pitching, just down and out. Is that fair? Yeah. Very and fair. Um, to do what he's done here is truly remarkable, and it's a true testament to the type of man that he is. And um, he, I'll let him tell you the story at another time, but it's really amazing what he's been able to do. And, Appreciate um, you, Coach. Really, Nolan and Devin, these are red shirts. They're red shirted. They didn't make road trips. They just waited their turn. They just waited for their time. In the day and age where people just run and leave because they don't get their playing time that they want, these guys waited their turn. They watched the bus leave week after week. They just stayed here. And all they did was make themselves better and believe in this program and do everything they can to help Kentucky. And um, this is a perfect example of exactly what's going on in our program. A bunch of selfless guys that have just waited their turn and for their opportunity to help Kentucky. These two guys on the end, they literally, when you ask them in the portal, what are you looking for? Say, I want a place where I can win and I can develop. That's what they wanted. That's what they wanted. And now here they are. They've won and they've developed. And they're better than they've ever been. And uh, truly remarkable. Um, maybe when this season's over, um, who was the, the show where it was like the rest of the story? Who is that from my years? Paul Harvey. Paul Harvey. This, when this whole thing is over and this season's over, you guys will know the real rest of the story and it will blow you away. It will blow you away, the sacrifices that these guys, not only them, the rest of the people in our program have made to be in this position. It's really remarkable. Yeah, and actually to go off of you, Coach, like, it's just like we all believe in you because um, you, you make us better. The type of man you, like, you always want us to, like, be a great human beings and we just look up to you and we believe in you and everything you've done. I mean, that shows Nolan and Devo and even me, like the first conversation you and me ever had, we connected on faith and I knew I wanted to come here because of uh, the per type of person you were. Yeah. I'll add on to that. Shout out Coach Minge, um, Devin can attest. He's been the same guy since the first day I stepped on campus. And uh, we had some seasons we didn't, we didn't do what we wanted to do. And he's, I mean, he's just, held the course and he's been an amazing coach and amazing leader and I can't thank him enough and I know Devin can back me up on that. Yeah, I, yeah I'll go after him. Um, just, uh, you know, Coach Minns gave me, a, uh, you know, Coach Coggin actually recruited me here, but then Coach Minns, you know, he's the big dog. He goes, he does the final say, you know what I'm saying? So, man, he, he gave me a chance to come here, you know, not only me, but my family, you know, I don't come for very much and, you know, he, he gave, it gave my mom a good opportunity for me to come here and be able to afford this place and, you know, just really enjoy my time here and not make it stressful on me and my family. And, you know, I just can't appreciate him enough, man. And, you know, like he said, you know, a lot of guys, they tuck their tail and they run whenever they don't get playing time. But you can't do that when you get the pro ball. You know, my mom was big on that, you know, red shirting, you know, that the portal opened up. And I'm like... Mom told me you ain't going nowhere. Like Coach Mintz gave you a shot to be there, and you're going to earn it. You're going to sit there and earn it. I said, yes, ma'am. <laughs> gave you a shot. You know, I'll, never, I'll, never, I'll never say enough thanks to him, man. He, he made me into half the man I am today. You know what I'm saying? So I appreciate you. I remember the story about um, when we decided that it would be in Devin's best interest to redshirt him. And uh, I think Mom came and picked him up, and they were driving home. And I ended up talking to Miss Denise and I just said, hey, I just want to make sure that you understand, like, we believe this is the best thing for Devin. We believe he's going to be a great player for us one day. But what our current situation is, this is the best thing. And I'll never forget what his mom said. She said, coach, whatever you decide, I trust you. I've given you my son and I trust you. Come on, who says that? Good mom. What mom? Like, really? Really? I just said your son, you're paying, investing all this money to send your son to come to not play for one inning? And she says, Coach, I trust you. Whatever you think is best for Devin. I mean, come on. What an amazing woman. And uh, 
Yeah, I'll never forget that. I'll never forget that. Thanks, guys. Yep. <laughs> Kristen, get up here. Reeves, Reeves, come on. We're doing a family one tonight. How long you're going to give them to celebrate? Nah, I haven't. What do you guys think? I'm gonna, I think I might give them till tomorrow. You think? I, I mean, I guess it is tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. We'll give them tomorrow. Yeah, I haven't told them. I haven't told them. Well, give them to today. We'll give them tonight. Tonight, yeah. yeah. Midnight tonight. Midnight. Midnight till, what is this? Is this already Monday? So Monday at midnight? Tuesday, Wait, Tuesday morning? <laughs> Coach Devin said he had already, he'd already said it's after midnight, so this counts until Monday. <laughs> yeah, got it's like good thinking. Yep. Uh, Michael Epps of Fox 56. The, the moment that you shared with Reeves was pretty amazing. I've told you before, I'm not, you know, a UK yeah. fan, I'm not from here. I, I felt the emotions yeah. in the entire place after that win. But that moment specifically, when you picked him up and you were just screaming to the heavens and Reeves was just crying. I mean, that was. An amazing moment. Can you guys both talk about that? What did you think, Reeves? Tell them how you felt. Amazed and very happy. Yeah. I mean, never felt anything like that in my life. No. I'll just never forget that moment. Yeah. Guys, um, this is going to be hard, but... I want to get real with you guys. I cannot do this without Kristen. She is my rock. And coaches' wives do not get enough credit for what they have to go through. Um, the 2022 was a really hard time for me. It, it was a really difficult time. And um, I want to share some things of why. And maybe you see a side of me that you haven't seen. Cole Stuff and Darren Williams both go down. I have as much respect for Cole Stuff as any pitcher that's ever pitched for me. He loved this place, he loved it, and he goes down and so does Darren Williams. And I can tell you that one of the worst feelings as a coach is to have your, one of your players get injured. It crushes me personally and it crushes this woman to my left. It's like these are her own kids and we lost them for that year and we really believed that we had a regional or super regional type team and I, I'm going to tell you this we went on this great run we were one win short we were one win short we finished fourth in the SEC tournament for the first time ever it was the best finish but we were one win short but earlier in that year I had some dark nights you know Devin or Nolan paid me a compliment and I did the best I could hold it together but I was really crushed as a coach I was hurting like I've never hurt before. And I can be hard-headed and I can be stubborn. Ask this woman. <laughs> She'll tell you. But I, and I was beat down. I was a beat down coach. And God taught me a valuable lesson. I did something that I've only done two other times in my life and I surrendered. I just finally said, Lord, I'm done. I'm done. I cannot do this on my own anymore. I'm hurting for those two boys. I'm hurting for our team. I just felt like, man, and I was trying to do it all by myself. And the Lord put it on my heart that I was not using my spiritual gifts that he's given me. And he basically, we had to make changes. 
I had to make changes. And one major change we made was we brought Nick Amirati from coaching third base to the dugout to be with the players. And it put me at third base. And I started coaching third base on May 15th of 2022. I started coaching third base and I put ammo in there. You can't make this up. I surrendered. I surrendered. I said, Lord, I can't do it. And that's what he led me to do. I want to play you a song. I want to play you a song. And this song describes perfectly how God changed my life that Lord, this battle belongs to you. And from that day on, on May 15th, you can check the stats. In the regular season only, we have more wins than any team in the SEC since that day. You can't make this up. Only God can make this up. And people told me it would be impossible for Kentucky to make it to Omaha. I literally had people tell me that. And that day I surrendered, and this is what the Lord has done. Reeves knows a Bible verse for every letter in the alphabet. I'm a proud father of that. Reeves, what's your J Bible verse? Jesus what? what Jesus is... looked at them intently and said, humanly speaking, it is impossible. But with God, anything is possible. And God taught me a lesson. It's not what you're playing for. It's who you're playing for. And I got done chasing this dream of Omaha. And I just said, I'm done. I'm not chasing that anymore, Lord. I want to play for you. It's not what you're playing for, it's who you're playing for, and that's what God taught me. So here we stand today. I give him all the honor and glory. To God be the glory. Amazing. Amazing, and I hope you appreciate my transparency because that was real. Cody, you talk about your faith. What was going through your head in those last three pitches? What, what were you saying to God? Like, I was just like, Lord, please bless these kids. <laughs> like, that's what I was. I really was, especially when Hoagie was out there, what all he has been through. I was just like, Lord, please bless these players. Please. And that your will be done. And Aaron Hogue, just a good friend of mine, he sent me a text a couple days ago, and he just reminded me that God was on his throne and that we would be fine regardless. And God already knows the beginning, the end. He already knows the whole story. This has all already been written, and I just trust him. I've asked the pitchers earlier, just can you just talk about their mentality this oh. week and their toughness? Three, hit, three hits all weekend against one of the best offenses in the league. Yeah, and, you know, Mason was rolling today. He was rolling, and he got into trouble in the fourth, and they did a great job just grinding him. There are two strike foul balls, you know, um, they did all that without a hit. They scored all those runs and got him for a ton of pitches. And it just got to a spot where he threw too many pitches in that inning. We had to make a change. Um, but Dan Roselle has done a remarkable job with our pitchers from day one. And um, 
He gets them to be pitchers, not throwers. And that's what our guys did. For the last however many weeks, we've been pitching. We're not, we haven't been throwing. So, you know, I, I give our players a lot of credit, too, for even recognizing the job that Dan has done, just calling the game. I mean, they had two hits today. I mean, that they led, I mean, offensively, you guys know all the statistics where they led statistically. Um, in the country now, there's 305 Division I schools, and they're leading the country in a lot of top 10 in a lot of offense categories. And you only do that with really good players, a good game plan, and a coaching staff like Coach Roselle. He's had them ready. He had them ready. So Cam was fantastic. Uh, the job that Hoagie did, awesome. Um, Ryan Hagenow came in, and we were going to use this changeup. That's how we were going to try to get um, their leadoff guy out. And uh, James made a good play, got the ball in immediately. And next thing you know, Johnny came in and did what he does, just pump a ton of strikes and got a huge punch out. But pitched and really defended at a super high level. Right here. Kind of expanding on Johnny, you know, he didn't even pitch at the regional. How big is it just for him to – Finally get his moment coming to finish that role. Yeah, and you know, our starters did such a good job the last two weekends. Our starters did amazing for the most part, and Cam's been our fireman, and he started throwing the ball as good as he's thrown, and same thing with Hoagie. But uh, he's waited his turn, and uh, boy, was he ready for that. I mean, Kuzi, Austin Cousineau, I'm so happy for him. A guy that loves Kentucky to come here in the first year. And uh, when we were bringing... Uh, um, Johnny and he came up to me in a dugout and Kuzi's like, do you remember what you told me about Johnny Hummel when we were recruiting him? And uh, I said, yeah, I do. I said, do you remember? He's like, coach, you told me that that guy for the last year at the school he was at, he pitched with the game on the line. Every time that opposing coach gave him the ball, it was his job to hold it and stop it. And I said, yeah, I do remember that. And he goes, he's going to get this done right here. He's going to get this done. That's what Kuzi said, and sure enough, we did. Michelle. Michelle Pinesvic, UK Sports Network. Right. Coach, you talk a lot about the experiences these last two weeks. Start with the selection show. Reeves told us that he got baptized. The team came. Crowds you've never seen before at this park, and now you're heading to Omaha for the first time. I mean, can you even describe it all? I can. These have been the best two weeks of my life. Yep. I, I mean, I don't, I don't know how you can make it better. We sat in this room two months, I guess, is today, Mon is it Monday? Yeah, two weeks ago. There we go. It's still Monday. <laughs> two weeks ago, we sat here, and we had the whole team, and they did a selection show, and we were the number two national seed. And then this little dude stands up, and he invites the team to his baptism on Thursday. So then the whole team voluntarily, they didn't have to come. I told them two different times, guys, don't feel like you have to come. They show up. This dude gets baptized. Kristen and I both did it. Um, and then uh, we play Friday, we win. We play Saturday, we win. We play Sunday, we win. Then we have a great week of preparation in practice. We play Saturday, we win. We play Sunday or Monday night, and we win. It's just I don't know. I don't know how you, you could have a better two weeks. Um, as parents, for him, to make the greatest decision he could ever make in his life. And then uh, to give our fans and our players an experience they'll never forget. And um, Kristen was born in Omaha. When I first met her at Mississippi State, um, realized we share the same faith and she was beautiful. And I said, where were you born? She's Omaha. I'm like, it's meant to be. <laughs> it was meant to be. So the joke has always been to take her home. She was born on the Air Force Base there. And um, taking you home. Let's go. Taking you home. So um, I'm also really happy um, for Mitch Barnhart. Um, the guy has um, done amazing um, things, not just for our baseball program. If you guys really, and I hope you guys have, He's the second longest tenured athletic director in the Power Five conferences. Second longest. There's teams in our league that I've been through seven athletic directors. <clears throat> seven. And he has stood the test of time. And I always say he's been, a couple, he's been under a bunch of attacks, and I say his skin is so scarred over you guys can't get him anymore because <laughs> he's just so tough. Um, but he built this place, this room you're sitting in, this, this facility. This is long before Nick Mangione ever came. He built this place. 
and invested in it and just envisioned this could be possible. And um, what he's done for all of our sports has been truly remarkable. And um, I'm really happy for him. I'm really happy for him. A few more here. Coach Aaron Gershon from the Cats Plus. Can you just walk us through what you saw in Nolan's play from your vantage point? Of yeah. Time? Did you give him the stop sign? Later? All right. All right. I'm going to quote the players. They said he's crazy. Coach Minch didn't say that. Okay. Um, Nolan is like super aggressive, and um, the guys called him crazy. Okay. Um, and um, Nolan is the guy that wants to do this, make the special play. Okay, um, I was telling him to stop verbally, okay, <laughs> not physically, yep. but the game was in front of him. Um, and I'm happy he went because he saw something. And we allow our players to make decisions on their own. This was different than like a base hit or something. The play was actually in front of him. When there's a play in the outfield, the play is behind him. But this was a play that was in front of him. And... Um, I said this in the ESPN interview um, after the game, that easy coaching is just sitting there doing nothing. You don't bunt, you don't steal, you don't hit and run, you don't do anything. Really, that's actually easy coaching. It's hard coaching to try to get guys to do the fake bunts, the slashes, the hit and runs, the hit home runs, the battle with two strikes, like to put plays on. It's hard. But we have allowed our players to play with what I would say brains and guts. It takes brains and guts. And we allow them to make mistakes. You've seen it all year. How many times have they tried to take an extra base and get thrown out? How many times have they tried to ball in the dirt and they get thrown But we allow them to play aggressive. And we believe that when you do that, you put pressure on 18 to 24 year olds, you're gonna get them to make a mistake eventually. And it just, it's hard on them. And I'm glad he went and he did the Superman dive. Like he was gonna do something that it was gonna be like, you know, it was like a Nolan McCarthy moment. You know what I mean? And um, so yeah, I was telling him to stop, but I actually had my back. It was actually roles were reversed. I saw the catcher catch it, but I didn't see the pitcher, but he did. And uh, I thought it was a great play. If I can follow up real quick, is he okay? I know he came out of Yeah, he said he, I give him a lot of credit too because he kind of tweaked his hamstring on that. And he basically, during that pitch change, was like, Coach, I'm getting tight. I cannot make a play right now. Yeah. And he actually took himself out, which is really, really smart and unselfish. He's like, Coach, I can't make the plays that the game's going to demand. And I was like, okay, you want to come out? And he's like, yes, I do. And um, Ty Krittenberg was ready. Like, that guy is always ready. He's been preparing for his moment. He's always ready. And, um, yeah, so he was honest with that. So I was proud of him for that. Yeah. Jeff? Nick, you mentioned earlier that someone had the uh, – literally told you you can't make it to Omaha oh, yeah. through Kentucky. Looking back on that, was was there ever any thoughts that crossed your mind? Maybe they're right, and, and how did you overcome that? Yeah. Um, I fell in love with this place. In the summer of 2005, John Cohen gave me the opportunity to come here. And um, – I came from Embry Riddle as an Annie IA school, and we had been in College World Series three years in a row. And really, we had to come from a program where you just won. That's what you did. And that first year, we won the SEC. And it was an amazing experience, and we host our first ever regional. And I saw how the people, like, just rallied. We didn't have big crowds originally, and then we started winning, and the people started coming to the games. And that's when I fell in love with Kentucky. And this is the place You've heard me say this over and over. This is the only place I wanted to coach. And Kristen will tell you, tell them what I told you, like when we first met. Like, sitting, when we were first married, we were sitting on our couch in our 725 square foot condo. And he said, Kristen, I'm gonna be the head coach at the University of Kentucky one day. And I was like, all right, let's have big dreams. <laughs> let's keep going and here we are. And to add to that, when people told us we couldn't make it to Omaha, I said, challenge accepted. Let's do it. Let's do it. See where I get some toughness from? <laughs> so, she doesn't move. No, she does not <laughs> move. move. This Neither is, does BBN. This is a tough woman. I mean, she is. Coaches' wives, they just don't get enough credit. They live and die on every pitch, every recruiting phone call, every game, every injury. 
um, they're in it and she is in it with us. And um, I told you in 22, I had some long nights and she was right there for me. And um, so, yeah, how did I handle it? I just threw prayer. I'm gonna share something with you guys um, since you asked. Um, I'm gonna miss some people, but I believe in the power of prayer. And three years ago, Coach Madison challenged me. I'm so happy for Coach Madison, by the way. 25 years to this program. He's been leading our staff in a coach's Bible study for eight years, eight years. And three years ago, he challenged me and the other coaches to find seven people to pray for you every day. So I was like, okay. So I found seven people that have been praying. I believe in the power of prayer. But I went through my phone and I typed in the text messages, prayer, okay? And all these text messages came up. Listen to all these people that have been praying for this moment and for our players and their hearts and souls. Kristen, Reese prays, Courtney prays, and the BSF prayer warriors, Mitch Barnhart prays, Connie Barnhart has prayed, Keith Madison has prayed, Sharon Madison, Tim Bernal, Shelly Bernal, Mackenzie Willoughby, Kirby Willoughby, Hannah Pollard, Shelby Gatewood, Lee Pollard, Allison Pollard, Aaron Hogue, Jason Cummings, Ryan Arrington, Matt Jolly, Kendall Graveman, Nathaniel Lowe, Austin Neary, Linda Southward, Chris Cobb, Glenn Vermillion, Amanda Mingione, Bo McKinnis, his son Clayton McKin McKinnis prayed, and he sent me the message that said, this was one of Clayton's, he's, at the time, I think he was 13 years old, he said, dear Lord, for some reason, we're playing for the Kentucky baseball team. I don't know why, but please be with them. <laughs> That's what it said on my phone. I loved it. Nikki McKinnis, Jim Ellis, Matt Leo, Rick Avar, Diane, A Diane Avar, Matt Minner, Joy Minner, Jason Crowder, Sean Umbro, Eddie Grand, Robbie Ross, John Weiss, Scott Nickel, Keith Galloway, Mike Martin, Greg Williams, Todd Williams, Julie Williams, Doug Flynn, Bug Brown, Robin Lewis, Justin Lewis, Rich Maloney, Luke Wren, Wynn Harris, Janook Tallwalker, Danny Steckler, Matthew Huther, Scott Drew, Steve Jude, Josh Walker, David Woods, Greg White, Michelle White, Bam Sykes, Matt Wallace, Steph Wallace, J.P. Blevins, Robin Thompson, Jake Sponsel, Scott Kappelman, Leslie Thomas, Josh Teeter, Josh Walker, our entire coaching staff, Dan Roselle, Melissa Roselle, Brock Dowd, Austin Cousineau, Nick Amirati, Caroline Amirati, Trevor Fitz, Abby Fitz, Richie Wells, Logan Salo, Sid Salo, Garden Size Baptist Church, Ashley Geiger, and Chris Morgan. That was 87 times. And the Lord put it on my heart last night. I woke up at 5 o'clock this morning. And I created that list at five o'clock this morning. I was like, I'm, all right, Lord, I will give you the credit. All those people. So when you ask, did I ever have any doubts? And there was doubts. But I just believe in the power of prayer. And to God be the glory, all those people did it. Yeah, a couple more quick ones. Dick, and then down here. Nick, in your opening statement, you talked about your players and their love for one another. How does that manifest itself, number one? And number two... Um, why is that so important? Because teams have won fighting with, I mean, you know, they were the A's and all that. Why is that so important? We believe that feedback is the breakfast of champions. Okay? And our guys, they do love one another, but that doesn't mean that we don't have internal conflict sometimes. And I've explained to them that that's okay. If we're truly a family, I don't know about your family, but my family was far from perfect. And there was internal conflict. But when you love someone, you care enough to give them feedback and you challenge them sometimes. You have to. That's what the great teams do is they communicate at a high level and they hold each other accountable. The hardest part is to get them to hold each other accountable. That's the hardest part. And we often say in our program, the standard is the standard, regardless of what it is. And if someone's not meeting the standard, they need to be told about it. And eventually, when you get to the spot where you trust one another enough and you love one another, you can handle that and you don't get your pride in the way. It's okay. It's okay. And you need to ask yourself, are they, is someone telling me this because they're trying to be a jerk or are they trying to help me? And if you could take a step back sometimes and go, no, he's actually trying to help me. Well, the, our team would do that to each other. They would check each other. And we have a saying in our program, there's six things that we are not. We don't whine, we don't complain, we don't make excuses, and we're not soft, lazy, and selfish. Those six things are not allowed inside our house. 
You're not allowed to do those things. And they call each other out. Like, that's not, it's outer house. Excuses, palms up, palms up. Hey, palms up, palms up. He did his palms ups. And it's like, no. And they hold each other accountable. And then after you do that enough and you realize, like I, I always tell them, I, I want to check to your heart. If your heart is right, then we're good. But if your heart is not right and your intentions are not right, then we're not okay with that. And this team... And the, in the teams in the past, you could see it coming, but they generally like love and they trust and they believe in each other. And if you check them, they'll, they'll, they'll say yes. Mason Moore could tell you a story about Grant Smith not saying a nice word to him and calling him out at Missouri and Mason thanking him after, like just challenging him, like a real true man challenge. And that's what we've done to this team. It's like every time we challenge him and we give him, we call it a man challenge. It's like we call him out or we try to get him to step up, this team responds. And they respond to each other, and they respond to the coaches. And um, I thought Nick Amorati did a good job of that tonight. Um, Nick called Ammo, called the guys up. He's done amazing. I told you what's happened ever since we put him in the dugout. We're, we have, he's an amazing coach. He called him up in the fourth, and we scratched out a run. You know what I mean? Like, it was everything we could in the fourth. He was just working so hard to put them, I would say, on the fish. And um, did a great job, but they respond. They're, they respond. They respond. Last one, that Ryan. Uh, Ryan, the Louisville Prairie Girl. Uh, you know, Nick, you've already been asked a couple of questions about Nolan's go ahead run. Yeah. And, and I want to talk about it in the bigger picture to ask you you guys have never been a program that leans on like the home run. So, Grand Slam, et cetera, could be something to send you to the College World Series. But is that play for you the perfect kind of just identity of what your program is? If that was the way that you guys ended up going to Omaha with it. A guy, you staying aggressive on the base paths, and this is what you've also said, allowing your players to make plays. You know, I, ha I, hadn't, thought about, I hadn't thought about it that way. Um, did he hit the double? Yes. Is that what he did, right? He hit the double, and then this team is so awesome. He, did they do the double, you know, <laughs> celebration? For his 100th career hit, by the way. Double was it really? So he hits the double, the team celebrates, he gets excited, and then we know that they're going to throw breaking balls and that there's going to be a chance for him to try to get the third base, and uh, Mitch Daly actually did that earlier. But the fact that he attacked with zero hesitation, zero, I mean, he like, zoom, I'm like, oh, here we go, oh yeah, like the fact that he was and felt comfortable enough in his own skin to do that. I'm good with that. I'm good with that. And when we attack, that is us at our best. And I, guys, I've been doing the same pregame speech for almost the whole year. And that's the third thing that I tell them. I tell them the strength of our team is, and then they say the team. And I say, victory must be earned when? And they say, every day. And then I tell them, you know what we're going to do tonight? We're going on the attack. On the what? And they say, attack. I'm like, on the what? And they're like, attack. It's the third thing I tell them. The strength of our team is our team. So I reminded them of that every game. Tell them the second thing. Victory must be earned when? Every day. This is a new day. We have to earn it today. This is how life works. You got to get up and you got to go to work every day. It doesn't stop. And then the way we're going to do it is go on the attack. And now that you say that, that was just a beautiful way for us to go to Omaha, a guy attacking, and maybe you can just show the Superman picture <laughs> of him flying right through there. That would be a cool pick. Cats were on the attack. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, guys. Go Cats. See you in Omaha. Come on. Thank you, guys. Hey, Reed. Thank you. What's your... Uh...